This is Top 30. Welcome to the show, I'm Richard Bacon. And I'm Kristen Smith. We have 30 stories in 30 minutes. Coming up after a deadly flu season, are we finally seeing relief? When shopping online, you can't try anything on. Now a new company has a solution. And after losing her ability to walk, a teen gives her prom date the surprise of a lifetime. <laughs> But first, Mother's Day is less than two weeks away now, and a new study shows how much Americans are going to spend and what the most popular presents are. The National Retail Federation found people plan to spend an average of $180 this year on their mom. That means total spending across the country will be about $23.1 billion. It's considered a strong forecast, but it's half a billion dollars less than last year. So what are the most popular presents this year? Many people surveyed said they're getting mom multiple things. A card topped the list, flowers, a special dinner or brunch, a gift card, and clothing rounded out the top five. And in case you still don't know what you're buying, you have until May 13th to get that perfect present for mom. Well, the flu was especially harsh this season, with health officials reporting the highest death count for children in the last five years. As it winds down, the CDC says, we never officially declare flu season over because it's always circulating. A good reminder to get your flu shot in September. And actress Ashley Judd has filed a lawsuit against Harvey Weinstein, claiming he damaged her career and blacklisted her when she turned down his sexual advances. For example, Judd was up for a role in the Lord of the Rings franchise. But director Peter Jackson now says Weinstein Weinstein issued a smear campaign against Judd, calling her a nightmare to work with, and she didn't get the part. And a Florida photographer is calling this the best picture I've ever taken. That's a hawk carrying a shark who is carrying a fish in its mouth. Unreal, what an incredible photo. Uh, that's quite a picture. Let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute with your friend and mine, Nicole Pedladies. Nicole, Twitter has made a big announcement. That's right, Richard. Twitter is expanding its programming slate with new premium video deals. Some of these include live sports and entertainment shows created by Disney. Twitter is also expanding its existing partnership with Viacom with shows like Comedy Central's Creators Room, BET Breaks, and MTV News. Chipotle is teaming up with DoorDash for food delivery. The partnership will cover almost two thirds of the chain's restaurants in the United States. We've seen fast food chains partnering with delivery services such as McDonald's deal with Uber Eats and Yum Brands with Grubhub. One of the biggest frustrations of shopping online is a poor fit. So an online fashion site wants to change that by using body scanning technology. Nicole, that seems astonishing. How exactly will it work? You put on the suit, scan yourself by using your phone, and voila, your measurements are generated. The company will then offer clothes to fit you. Hopefully, this takes some of the hassle out of shopping. Hope so. Nicole, on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, thank you. New tests for breast cancer could be the most accurate ever. Researchers at Israel's Ben Gurion University were able to detect early breast cancer by testing a patient's breath and urine. It is the most common form of cancer in women. Currently, the cancer is most often diagnosed using mammograms. The scans are between 75 and 85% accurate, but aren't always able to detect small tumors. The urine test was found to be about 85% accurate. It uses gas chromatography, mass spectrometry to look for unique substances in the sample. The breath test was even more accurate at 95%. It used two different sensors that act as electronic noses to look for a unique breathing pattern. Both methods use technology that is already available. The study's authors say our new approach is non-invasive, accessible, and may be easily implemented in a variety of settings. The scientists hope they will also be able to use the technique to find other types of cancer. I certainly hope so. More Top 30 after this. Welcome back. Our friend Headcrack over at Dish Nation dishes up the hottest celebrity news. So Headcrack, I hear Justin Bieber went to a very personal exhibit. That's right, Kristen. Justin Bieber visited the Stratford Perth Museum in Ontario this past weekend to check out an exhibit dedicated to Justin Bieber. They have dozens of personal items from Bieber's childhood, including his first drum set, skateboards, and an old hockey bag. You still got time if you want to check it out as it runs to the end of the year. But me personally, I'd rather be doing anything else. 
I'd even watch a documentary on how towels are made. Maybe even read Issa Rae's book, The Misadventures of an Awkward Black Girl. Now, although it's been out for three years, some people are just now getting into it, and many took to Twitter to complain over a section in which Issa suggests black women should date Asian men. It wasn't pretty. Tristan Thompson has finally broken his social media silence, but he wasn't talking about his daughter True or the cheating allegations. He just wanted to share his excitement over his team's latest win against the Indiana Pacers. Can't blame the guy for trying to keep positive, but man, quite reminds me to know. Anyway, that was it for this week's Dish. See you next time. Yeah, Tristan needs to address the elephant in the room already. Thanks, Headcrack. For the latest celebrity news, watch Dish Nation weekdays. Check your local listings. All right, how about this story? Many scientists say that if you're washing your dishes with a sponge, you're doing it wrong. According to one recent study, the average home kitchen sponge has more than 360 types of bacteria. There are about 45 billion germs per square centimeter. Other researchers found bacteria living on sponges that can give humans diseases like E. coli and salmonella. One reason sponges are so dirty is the amount of food residue that gets stuck to them and even inside them. One expert tells Time the sponge never really dries. It's the perfect environment for bacteria. So instead of a sponge, dishes can be cleaned with brushes made from silicone or plastic. Those materials are less porous, so they can dry faster and are less likely to hide bits of food. If you just have to use sponges, Good Housekeeping found it was possible to clean them by soaking them in a bleach solution or putting them in a microwave or dishwasher. Sponges are still safe on items that you don't use to eat. It's that time of year when high school seniors are deciding where they want to spend the next four years at college. But for an increasing number of students, their admissions fate is still up in the air. Students are applying to more schools than ever, and as a result, colleges have increased the number of students placed on their wait lists. According to the National Association for College Admission Counseling, the average college wait list has increased 11% from 2015 to 2016 alone, and the number of students who ended up getting admitted off the wait list increased 30%. But some students are upset that being on the wait list drags out the entire admissions process, referring to it as college admissions purgatory. While students have to accept an offer of admission by May the 1st, colleges have until the start of the fall semester to finish admitting students off their wait lists. Um, now, a high school student gave her day a surprise he wasn't expecting when he picked her up for the dance. Complications from a surgery left Morgan unable to walk for the last 10 months, bound to a wheelchair. But when her date, Tarek, shows up at her house, uh, there she is standing and even takes a few steps toward him. <laughs> As you can see, her date was incredibly surprised and overwhelmed. And later that night, Morgan was crowned the high school's prom queen. She shared the video on Twitter over the weekend, and it already has more than a million likes. Such an inspiring story. I love it. Top 30 will be right back. Welcome back to Top 30. The Time's Up movement is calling on several businesses to, quote, mute R. Kelly. An announcement asks RCA Records and Ticketmaster, as well as Apple Music and Spotify, to cut ties with the singer. It demands appropriate investigations and inquiries into the allegations of R. Kelly's abuse. Kelly denies all allegations against him. You know, just to take a look back in 2002, he was indicted on 21 yeah. counts of child pornography. Of course, in 2008, he was found not guilty on all counts. But um, yeah, back in the news, the Time's Up movement yeah. said that uh, Bill Cosby's conviction was a step in the right direction. Yeah. that might be the, the most significant thing about the Cosby conviction. R. Kelly has put this in, in terms of racism. And he says, since America was born, black men and women have been lynched for having sex or being accused of it. Right. Which is, um, I think, in a way, a fairly disgusting way to divert attention from this. This is not about the persecution of people of color over decades. This is about very specific allegations that people yeah. are calling uh, for an, you know, proper investigations. Into. Yeah, and you mentioned just even in the past year, um, accusations of sexual coercion and yeah. physical abuse.
uh, not to be taken lightly, of course, so we will see what happens as the movement continues. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk about this story. In, yeah. in 1994, a guy named Jean-Noël Friedman bought the website France.com. Well, over the years, it offered French news, tourism advice, and travel deals until it was seized by the French Foreign Ministry for a trademark violation. So now Friedman is taking on the French government to try and get this website back. Now, his argument is that the French government didn't have license to do that. They didn't ask for licensing. They didn't offer to buy no. it. They literally just took it. And he's like, um, excuse me, that's illegal. His lawyer has said, quoting here, domain names are a first come, first served product. And that is true across the globe. I can see why they would think maybe they should own it, but this far into a person's business, yeah. it's just, sometimes I think governments don't understand how hard it is to run a business. It's yeah. just difficult, yeah. just to seize it. Mm -hmm. You know what I would tell a, France um, if, if they were watching right tell now? Tell them. I would say so, you, can't, you can't snatch. You have to talk about it. And you know- Tell them in to... French, otherwise they won't understand. <laughs> 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 they know just by my body language. You can't snatch. Okay. <laughs> they got that message. And Top 30 will be right back. In today's hometown stories from Fox 29 Philadelphia, a community in Pennsylvania is stepping up to make sure every child can get a nutritious lunch at school, even if their family can't afford to pay for it. Dr. Ziad Munson, a school board member in the East Penn School District, wants to stop the lunch shaming that happens to kids who struggle to pay for lunch. When it was determined that they couldn't actually pay for the lunch, the lunch would be thrown away. Um, and then they were given, at the time, the policy was they were given an alternate lunch, um, which is horrifying. So now the district has started a GoFundMe page to cover the lunch costs for all students with delinquent accounts. In our second story from Fox 5 DC, three kids in the DC area got a free trip to Disney World thanks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Caitlin, Evelyn, and Samuel have had their fair share of health issues, but they got to experience a kid's dream come true when they arrived at the airport in a limo for their week-long trip. They were even greeted by a cheering squad before they boarded their flight. In our final story from Fox 26 Houston, Donald Hayes of Pearland, Texas won a new pickup truck thanks to a contest by Papa John's Houston and Gullo Ford of Conroe. And two Houston sports legend helped deliver it to his home. Houston Texan J.J. Watt and Houston Astro Jose Altuve arrived to a very excited group of fans, signing autographs and taking selfies. And by the way, the Papa John's wrap will come off the truck so Donald can drive it around town a little less noticeably. Welcome back to Top 30. The House just approved a bill that can soon have a major impact on everyone who flies. The proposal would require airlines to publish one-page summaries detailing compensation if a flight is diverted and create an app to report complaints. One of my favorite parts, however, about this new proposal yeah. is there would have to be a minimum length established for legroom. You would have thought that existed already. No, there has no, been a minimum no, no, That's so, so strange, huh? Legroom has decreased from 35 inches uh, to 31 inches. And we've between... all noticed that. Yeah. Oh my goodness, the width has also gone down 1.5 inches. But isn't it funny there weren't rules already in place for the, yeah. sort of the legal minimum of, uh, yeah. of seat size? We need them. This also bans, because now you get Wi-Fi on planes, which is a fantastic, I suppose, um, piece of technology. It's yes. often slow, the Wi-Fi, yeah. but you get it. But now, this will ban voice calls over Wi-Fi during flights, which is, like, good news. Yeah, right? that, is, that is good news, and a number um, of other things. It makes it easier for people to complain. Yeah. And uh, with airlines, it seems everyone always has a, a complaint or two. Yeah. Um, hard to argue against any of that. Uh, here is a story that has a lot of people talking. A wedding guest was invited to the evening portion of the celebration, and the invite included a request for cash gifts only. The guest posted the invite online, and people were outraged at the cash gifts only request. I'm more outraged at a person publishing this because this is, now people are laughing and ridiculing this couple that are about to get married. Right. And it's like you think, leave them alone. Right. Uh, but, I mean, for good reason. I mean, it's just so tacky is to it? say you can only give a cash gift. Here's why. Not a lot of people, I mean, some people don't have the amount of cash to give that would be acceptable. Like, if you give $10, you're going to be looked at as super cheap. However, if you but spend you know, that $10 on uh, a mug set or coasters... But the couple aren't going to publish how much money you donated. No, that was but private. you just feel embarrassed. 
as a yeah. gift giver, you would feel embarrassed. Have you come across that thing where people ask for contributions to the honeymoon? Have you seen that on yeah. wedding invite? That's, isn't that the same thing? I mean, no one's bothered by that. What's I the difference? I think it's a little different. It's, yeah. I think it's a little different. I, it's like giving them a vacation. I'm, I'm always offended when I get the evening only invite. Uh, that, yeah. that, bothers, <laughs> that would bother me far more than the cash thing. Okay, uh, well, how about this story? You've heard of a 5K or a 10K maybe for charity, right? Well, a Texas town is hosting its first annual 0.5K. Hmm. Yep, 0.3 miles designed for all the non-runners and the proceeds go to charity. So if you don't like running, this race is for you. Right. It's so funny, so before, before the race, you get a pint of beer. Brilliant. And then after the race, you get another pint of beer. Uh, there's a coffee and donut station, you know, for energy. Oh. And there's a VIP option. If you get that option, you don't even have to run and you get a better, a bigger medal. It's just <laughs> funny, like every <laughs> single element of this is funny. So Isn't funny. It? And it just sounds like a really good community event that actually, no, most people don't want to run 10 kilometers. Like most people, yeah. everybody wants to go for a walk and drink a pint of beer. <laughs> yeah, and give it to charity yeah. also. And everyone knows they're being funny and they're joining in the spirit of it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a more effective way to actually raise money yeah. because more people will want to take part and they know it's humorous. Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right because the race sold out just like that. Okay, it's magic. So very successful. I think this yeah. is going to be repeated for years to come. Yeah, I hope so. And if so, I will join in. Um, top 30 will be right back. Welcome back. Summer is right around the corner, and that means millions of people will be heading to the Jersey Shore for some fun in the sun. But one shore town is considering a major change. Mike Derrick from Fox 29 in Philadelphia joins us with more on the Great Boardwalk debate. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Kristen, the name of the town is Margate City. It's just not very far from Atlantic City. Of course, everybody knows Atlantic City has a great boardwalk, but Margate, the smaller town, does not. So when Hurricane Sandy hit, Governor Christie said, well, let's build up big sand dunes to protect the town of Margate. Trouble is, the piles of sand are so high, you can't see the Atlantic Ocean. So there's a plan, build a boardwalk high enough where you could see out to the ocean. So there's a petition floating around now and thousands of people are weighing in. Right now, more people want the boardwalk than not. Mike, didn't Margate have a boardwalk years ago? Yeah, I think it was built back in the 20s, but in 1944, there was a great Atlantic hurricane, blew it away, and they never rebuilt it. Okay, we'll see what they decide to do. Thanks, Mike. Well, here's a fact for you. Six million people get in car accidents every year, and nearly 15% of drivers are uninsured, which is why we've got today's top 30 steal a high-res dash cam at a special 79% discount. A dash cam puts the truth on your side and protects you from accident disputes or insurance fraud. It will ensure any fender bender is recorded and save your most memorable drives. The HD camera has infrared night vision and it turns itself on if your car jerks. It gives you peace of mind every time you drive and you might even catch the next viral video. The high-res dash cam retails for $59.99. But today you can buy it for just 25 bucks. That's about a 70 9% discount. You can get this right now at shoptop30.com while they last. Meghan Markle's engagement to Prince Harry is giving Canadian fashion designers an unexpected boost in sales. Now all eyes are on Meghan and what she's wearing at all times. John Muscat co-founded the brand Line the Label, and when Meghan and Harry posed for their first photos as an engaged couple, she wore one of their white wrap coats. He says his Instagram traffic tripled within hours and the company was overrun with thousands of requests for the coat. Meghan has worn a few items by Toronto-based women women's wear designer Bojana Centala, who says women get very excited to own a piece that one of the royals wore. Montreal brands like Burks and Mackage have also seen a boost when fans took notice of the gold and opal earrings Meghan wore while announcing her engagement and a burgundy jacket she wore during the closing ceremony at the Invictus Games. Whether she'll continue to wear Canadian brands once she's a royal remains to be seen, but for now her influence is putting Canadian fashion on the global map and designers could not be more thrilled. I bet. Okay, top 30 will be right back.
Welcome back to Top 30. A Pittsburgh Steelers offensive lineman who made headlines last year for his actions during the national anthem is now in the news again. Alejandro Villanueva is an army veteran who stood by himself for the anthem before a game last year. The rest of the team stayed in the locker room in response to President Trump's attacks on players kneeling during the anthem. Villanueva later said he didn't mean to stand by himself, but his jersey sales spiked that week with people buying it to show support for his actions. Now, USA Today is reporting he took the royalty money from the jersey sales and donated it to more than 20 charities. He didn't reveal how much money he donated, but he did say he focused on organizations in Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Baltimore, and Cincinnati, the NFL cities that make up the Steelers division. Cool story. All right, well, that's it for today's Top 30. Here's what's coming up on our next show. You might be able to live 10 years longer if you make a few changes. Plus, why scientists say that morning coffee is extra important. And this company has a business model that's all about inclusion. You can also listen to the day's biggest stories by subscribing to the new Top 30 podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time here on Top 30.